Hi, my name is Matthew Reed, and welcome to another How to Repair Pendulum Clocks Workshop Techniques video. And today we're going to be exploring the rule of thumb that states uh, if a clock mainspring is removed from its barrel and it doesn't develop to at least two and a half times the diameter of the barrel, then it should be replaced. Now, of course, uh, in clock repair, as in life itself, there is no such thing as should, must or ought to. And rules of thumb are great, but they are simply rules of thumb. They, in my view, shouldn't dictate our practice. So let's take a little step back for beginners. So mechanical clocks, uh, domestic clocks, are either weight-driven or they're spring-driven. And we're interested in the spring-driven ones today. So the vast majority of those domestic spring-driven clocks have uh, a strip of hardened and tempered steel that's curled up into a flat spiral, our main spring. And that mainspring is typically presented in one of three ways. Either what we call open springs, where there is no barrel retaining the mainspring, and the mainspring is simply uh, restrained at its inner and outer ends by the uh, arbor of the first wheel and the great wheel, and one of the frame pillars, typically open springs. The second category of uh, clock that we're interested in are what we call going barrel clocks. This is where the mainspring is contained, typically in a brass barrel or cylinder of material, and onto the periphery of that cylinder of material is cut the teeth of the first or great wheel in the clock train, a going barrel clock. The third category uh, we're looking at, and the one that we're primarily, but not exclusively, interested today are what we call fusee driven clocks, where the mainspring, again, is contained in a brass barrel, uh, but it's a plain cylinder of material with uh, caps on the end. And this uh, barrel is attached to the fusee and therefore the first wheel in the train, in the gear train, uh, by either a chain or a line or a gut or something, a fusee driven clock. And the reason I'm particularly interested in fusee driven clocks today is that we've got one on the bench, so that's always incredibly useful. Um, and I think uh, importantly that the uh, early 19th century, late 18th century clocks are the ones that have maybe, uh, if you like, suffered more from the replacement of mainsprings. Anyway, so we have our fusee driven clock, and when we look at the mainspring, I don't know whether this particular mainspring is original or whether it's later, it's not uh, modern, as in I would say reasonably for certain that it's not post uh, Second World War, um, when we look at the texture of that spring, it has this very highly textured surface compared with a modern spring which has a very finely ground surface. And what this represents, I think, is the fact that steel making and spring making technology has changed an enormous uh, amount over the past 200 years. And I'm sure some of you watching this video are metallurgists and you will be able to support that idea. Now, the point of a fusee in a clock is to even out the torque of a mainspring. And so, uh, in theory at least, uh, to be discussed, when the clock was new, it had a spring that reasonably matched the fusee, as in the torque output through the fusee was a flat line, uh, which we broadly have here, and I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. So um, you may say, well, Matthew, what's the problem? If you've got the clock in bits already, you've done your depthing and some washing or cleaning, if you like, and uh, what's the problem with replacing the spring? Well, the problem with replacing the spring, as I've said, is modern springs are completely different animals to their historic counterparts in the way that they 
um, present their uh, talk, if you like. Um, so if you were to replace a spring like for like in terms of uh, dimensions, particularly the thickness of the spring, then the actual nature of the uh, spring in terms of what it does is going to be quite different. And I would say um, very broadly about two thirds of the 18th and 19th century clocks that I get to work on have got replacement springs, which isn't a problem per se, but they are overdriving the clock, which is a major problem. Uh, and if the spring is significantly overdriving the clock, then that obviously causes uh, major problems down the line with unnecessary and relatively rapid wear. Again, I've got a video of replacing great wheel teeth where we had that issue and um, I've got uh, a video over on my other channel, Read Repairs, that um, shows you how you might go about determining whether you've got the right spring for your clock and choosing a new one if you haven't. So the problem here is not really uh, whether or not to replace these 19th century or early 20th century springs with new ones if they're doing the job. The real issue, of course, is um, what to do if your clock has got more modern mainsprings that are overdriving it. As I said, that has kind of been dealt with as far as I probably can. So let's take a closer look at our case study clock here. So you can see when the spring's out of the barrel, it doesn't develop more than two and a half times um, the diameter of the barrel, but it works absolutely fine. And uh, this is something that I've uh, been through time and time and time again um, where I've thought about these springs, I've cleaned them, greased them, refitted them, clock is absolutely fine. And when we test the torque output of the spring at the Fuse Z with this relatively inexpensive uh, torque meter thing, you can see over the run of a week that the torque is reasonably flat. I only took one reading for each turn of the fusee. If I'd taken three readings and averaged them out, the line would look even flatter. Um, and it works out somewhere between about 0.5 and 0.6 of a newton meter of torque at the fusee. So buy one of these um, relatively inexpensive uh, torque meter things. Um, they're about £50, uh, $70 or something, I think, at the moment, and incredibly useful because if you've got a striking clock like this, where the going train has to do work in moving on the star wheel and jumper and releasing the striking train and so on, you'll typically find that uh, you need about 0.5 of a newton meter, maybe 0.6 uh, uh, in order to for the clock to function correctly. With a timepiece clock, like a dial clock, uh, where you don't have the striking work, you will get away with about 0.35 to 0.4 newton meters uh, of torque. So if you test your spring and you find you're getting 0 0.7, 8, 9 or even a uh, newton meter, then it's a good indication that that clock is overdriven. As I say, on my other uh, channel, I show how to test the torque requirements of the clock and match up a spring. So that's kind of it, really. It's it's really um, a proposition and an ask if you're a member of uh, a horological institution or um, a clock repair institution training, then my plea, if you like, is for somebody to take this idea and to carry out some peer-reviewed, uh, controlled uh, experimentation in order to actually publish something on the uh, nature and this whole rule of thumb idea um, about the replacement of mainsprings in fusee-driven clocks because I'm seeing more and more 
unnecessary wear on great wheels and pinions and uh, and and so on so i hope that was of use uh, next time you have one of these clocks on the bench and it has an older or what appears to be an older mainspring unless it's actually cracked and you can see cracks under low power of magnification then my plea again is to wash it grease it try it and see how it goes. You can see here that the clock is running with good supplementary arc and here's a little note from my client after a couple of weeks saying that the clock's keeping great time and they're perfectly happy with it. So yeah, um, a, a challenge if you like not to build our practice on rules of thumb but to constantly question and interrogate. So thanks for watching. As always, if you subscribe and you like and comment, uh, it's great encouragement to me to make more videos and I'll be back soon with more content. In a similar vein, we're often told that if a mainspring, a clock mainspring, when removed from its barrel, forms this conical shape, it's been sort of pulled out, um, then it should be discarded. This, I would say, is not the case. The spring is actually perfectly fine. Uh, yes, it's not ideal, and yes, of course, always use a mainspring winder to safely remove and refit mainsprings. But if you do have a spring like this, just demonstrate to yourself by holding the outer end of the spring as if you are the hooking in the barrel wall and the inner end of the spring as if you are the barrel arbor and you'll see the spring is actually um, perfectly flat if you like particularly when you've got a spring like this one from a French clock where there is no um, direct modern equivalent available then just clean and refit the spring it's perfectly fine